The end is nigh, at least for Windows 10. Yes, support is ending in October this year, so all you holdouts are going to need to figure out a plan for your PC. Sure, your OS isn't going to suddenly collapse into a puddle of ones and zeros when October 14th rolls around, but do you really want to leave yourself open to the latest new exploit or AI-based hackfest? No, you do not. And if you're not ready to dive into the world of Linux and learning the terminal, there's only one thing for it. I'm Dave, and here's how to easily install Windows 11 fresh with no mess and no fuss. Now you may not be here because you want help getting Windows 11 onto your old Windows 10 rig, you might be looking to set up your own first DIY home build PC, or you might have either hit some brutal Windows issue that has left your system needed a complete reinstall, or else the bloat on your old rig has got so great it's time to light a match, burn the old OS down and start anew. Sure, there are in-place reinstalls you can do if you're already running Windows 11 and need to begin again, but that does require you to have a functional OS on your machine to refresh from. If you've hit a critical snag that's bricked your rig, then that's no use to you, my friend. Either way, the process is simple, straightforward, and shouldn't take much time at all, though it is kind of predicated on having another device to use in order to create a Windows installation disk. But no, you still don't need to have a Windows license or Microsoft account to get set up, and yes, it will feel like a brand new rig when you're finally up and running, ready to get your Steam library back into action. Step 1. Back up if you've got a Depending on where you're coming from, you might need to do some backing up. If you're looking to sort the earth of your Windows 10 build and start fresh with Windows 11, there might be some things you want to take with you, as a new install will completely wipe your old drive. If there are old photos you don't want to lose or documents you can't replace, then you'll need to find a new home for them, at least until your system is back in play. You might also have a slow internet connection and not want to go through the hassle of reinstalling all your Steam games again. The beauty of Steam is that you really can just take the entire installation folder from your Windows installation, copy it over onto another drive if you have space, and then just copy it back onto your fresh Windows install again. The app is smart enough to remake all the necessary OS connections to get things running again in a trice. That's a Dave Archaism for real quick, by the way. Step 2. Grab your ISO. The Windows ISO is a downloadable file that you can get for free from Microsoft itself, and you can then use that to create your own boot disk from which to install your new OS. Head to the link in the description to download the latest version of Windows 11, that will help avoid too many update downloads when you do install it onto your PC. The important thing to remember when you hit this page is to ignore what Microsoft says. It says your best option is to either use the Windows 11 installation assistant or create Windows 11 installation media button. It's not. What you want to do is just go straight for the ISO file itself and get yourself a download. Scroll down the page, hit the Select Download drop-down, and select Windows 11 for x64 devices. Hit the Misnamed Download Now button, and it will do some validating, and then present you the option to choose which language you want. Pick one, don't be hilarious, pick one you can at least read, and then hit Confirm. The page will do some more validating before finally giving you a button that reads 64-bit download, and you can actually start the 5.4GB download now. Step 3. Grab Rufus and a USB stick. Now you can go super old school if your rig is beige and from about 20 years ago, still has a DVD rewriter and you have a burning desire to burn the ISO onto a disk, but for genuine ease of use, a USB stick will do just fine. Today's Windows needs at least an 8GB USB drive on which to create your install disk, so go for one of those. There's probably one down the back of your sofa or in that drawer in the kitchen that just ends up being dumping ground for bits of old tech, phones, pens, screws, or you know, just general junk. We've all got one. Now, you need Rufus. I don't mean that useless Amazon AI bot, but an amazingly useful disk imaging tool. Click on the link in the description and get the latest version of Rufus downloaded. Rufus will help you create bootable media for all sorts of things, but I've mostly used it for either Windows or Linux OS installations, and it's ace. Step 4. Put it all together. With the ISO downloaded and Rufus on your machine, it's time to build your disk. Boot up Rufus and select your 8GB USB stick from the device drop-down menu. Make sure you've definitely selected the right one though, because the creation process will irrevocably clear out anything that's currently on there. Then select your ISO by hitting the Select button. Rufus will then scan the image and pick out the rest of the settings for you too. You just need to hit Start. And this is where Rufus comes into his own, because this is where it allows you to customise your Windows installation. This is where you can remove the requirements for Secure Boot and the TPM 2.0 restrictions, so if you're running a machine which only has an older TPM version, that would normally be locked out from a Windows 11 upgrade, so you're good to go. This is also where you can opt to start with just a local account, and here you can also select the initial name for it too, and this means you won't have to immediately log into a new OS with a Microsoft account straight off the bat. Now if you have a Windows 11 license attached to your MS account, then that won't bother you, but if you're just looking to set up a secondary system or don't want to have it tied into a Microsoft account, this will get you around the company's insistence on having one to run a Windows PC. Pick your customizations, click OK, and Rufus will begin building your installation disk. Step 5. Drivers. 
Windows is actually really good at installing on PCs now. There once was a time where a new Windows installation meant needing to have every single driver back up on a separate disk to use as a crutch for your Windows install media. That's no longer the case and Windows will normally just get itself up and running with minimal need for you to get involved. But the one thing that might scupper you is not having network drivers to hand. I would always suggest downloading at least your motherboard's network drivers, whether the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet drivers, and having them in a separate folder on your new Windows USB install drive just in case Windows can't get online itself to help smooth out the rest of the install process. If you have the network drivers to hand, Windows will generally take care of the rest, or else will get you to a place where the OS will mostly work it out itself and you can finish off the driver installed later. Step 6. Install. Now the easy part. Stick your USB drive into a spare port on the system you want to install Windows on and start the machine up. The system should automatically recognise a bootable disk and immediately start to run through the Windows install process. If it doesn't, then you might need to reset your PC and enter the BIOS by hitting Dell or F2 as the system starts. From here, you'll be able to select your install disk as the boot drive and start the install from the BIOS screen. Windows will get things ready for you and you will then hit upon a screen that asks you to pick your language and input method. Make sure the settings make sense and then hit the next button and then install now. Now you will have to select your setup option, whether a fresh install or a repair, and then check the box that agrees to nuke any data on the drive you're installing to. Then Windows will get a few things ready and then bring up the licensing agreement. Go through the licensing terms and definitely read the whole thing. I know I do every single time I install Windows. You will then be presented with a list of all the drives and partitions on your computer and asked where you want to install Windows. If you only have a single drive, this will be straightforward. But if you have multiple SSDs or hard drives in your rig, then you will need to make sure you select the correct drive. Make sure you do because this process will entirely wipe out any data on these disks, so be warned. If the drive you're aiming at has multiple partitions, I would suggest selecting each one at a time and hitting the delete button until you just end up with a selected drive stating just one lump of unallocated space. Select this lump and hit next and the installer will create a set of partitions and take you through to a final page where you can sign off on what you've created and finally click install. Now Windows will get on with installing itself. Step 7. The newness. Once Windows has installed, it will reboot your system and start loading into Windows. Now you can remove that USB boot disk so that it doesn't start up again the next time you reset your rig. At this point, Windows will try to connect to your network. That's simple if you're wired in, but you will need to connect to your Wi-Fi with your network password otherwise. It's at this point where you'll know if you need those motherboard drivers you downloaded earlier. We did. In other guides, this is where you'll also be recommended to hit Shift and F10 and go into the command prompt and type in a command to bypass the need to log in with your Microsoft account. Thankfully, Rufus has got us around this, and you will automatically be set up with a local account with the name of your choosing. The next part is the really boring one, where you have to go through a bunch of dry questions about just how much you want to be bothered by adverts, etc. The options are essentially the same, just with different amounts of data scraping performed. Anyways, once you've answered all these questions, Windows will look for any updates and will likely take an absolute age actually getting things ready, no matter how many times it says, just a moment, on the screen. But once that's done, you'll be presented with a fresh, zippy new version of Windows and essentially a whole new PC to fill up with your old crap. Step 8. Get drivers and restore your backups. There will probably be a ton of rituals you might have created for yourself when it comes to the first thing you stick on a new PC, but for me it's always about making sure you have both the latest chipset and graphics drivers installed on your rig. It's also worth right clicking on the start button and hitting device manager to look for any devices that are missing drivers or not working properly. It's also at this point where you can restore your Steam library if you've copied your old game files onto an external drive. All you need to do is port it all back over to the same location in your C drive and then go to the Steam folder itself and click the steam.exe file. It may pop up with an error message about missing connections or some such, but you will just have to confirm you want Steam to remake the links and it will go ahead and update the install and quickly lock you into your Steam account again. And from there, well, your new rig is ready to roll. Go forth and be fruitful. So I hope you found that helpful. I was Dave, the old man of PC Gamer, and please do all that liking and subscribing stuff YouTube people keep talking about. And don't forget to check out PCGamer.com if you're still into reading stuff, and check back here for more PC gaming and hardware video stuff soon. Thank you and goodbye!